This video is sponsored by Razer. Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Ines Alea, and you can consider me a YouTuber. I always have my camera with me, and the best part about being a YouTuber is that it doesn't matter where you are located in the world. The only problem is that I don't have my office with me at all times. That is until now. Now I carry my office in this small box at all times and it really allows me to be more creative all around the world. All right, so let me show you what my office actually contains. So what I'll do is put this here on the floor. Take a few steps back and... Whoa. All right, so... Here is my office. Oh, wait, one second. I almost forgot my camera. Let's get started. Hey what's up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Inezalea and I hope you enjoyed that little intro. I know the video is late, it should have been posted yesterday, but then the entire day from morning till evening I've been figuring out a weird problem that occurred on Premiere Pro and I couldn't edit this tutorial. I didn't have the time to restart everything from scratch, so I contacted the Adobe support, they helped me out, they couldn't find the solution. Anyway, today I contacted them again and they found the solution, so that's awesome, I'm back on track. Premiere is working smoothly on my computer finally again uh, so I'm here able to create another video. So we will see a few different things in this video today. I will be doing everything in Adobe After Effects. I know you can do it in Adobe Premiere Pro but in my opinion Visual effects are made to do in Adobe After Effects and not in Premiere Pro. It does work in Premiere Pro if you only have that, but it's just counterintuitive. Adobe After Effects works a little bit more efficiently and a little bit faster in my experience. That's why I chose to do it in Adobe After Effects today. I will provide you all the tutorial files necessary in order to follow this tutorial so you can follow along with the exact same footage as me. We'll put a link for that in the description below. Before we start with the actual tutorial, I just quickly want to mention today's video sponsor, Razer. Razer is one of my favorite brands when it comes to computer accessories and computer design. They offer a ton of products like keyboards, mice, mouse pads, uh, laptops, and so on and so on. Definitely check out our website. Every single product is just high-end. It just looks amazing and it actually works amazing because I already worked with a lot of other brands and just my personal preference always keeps coming back to Razer. It just looks so amazing and it just inspires me to create even more for you guys. So that's a good thing. All right, so definitely check out Razer with link in the description below and let's get to the tutorial. Alright, so here we are in Adobe After Effects and I already imported the files that you can download with the link in the description below. So this is the first clip where I just talk to the camera. I open the suitcase and I step back and then I jump in that suitcase and then I walk away and then we have a, our clean plate without me in the background. So if you would be doing this, make sure you do the exactly same thing. Uh, you jump and then you get out of the frame without touching the camera and get in as good as possible clean plate like this here. So what we'll do then is I will tackle this one first, but let's uh, just review the other files here. So here I'm going into the office. So what I do is just fill my chair first, then get in position and act like I fall in the chair. And there we go. And then I'm going up to pick up my camera. And then right here we have the shot with the camera and I'm just here on a pink blanket, actually. Oh. Gonna put a blanket, not to dirty myself. Okay. Pink blanket. Pink blanket. Is that necessary for the result? It's very important that it is pink. Okay. And it is very important that it is a pink blanket. <laughs> so, all right, uh, if we are going to continue right here, we can see that I just uh, pick up the camera like that. And that's how we are going to kind of fake it and cut out myself over here. Yes, Ines, everything okay? Installing the camera. Okay. To a lower angle. Perfect. And low angles are awesome. Yeah, it's not low. And then we have the clean plate for that shot, so uh, 
So what we'll do is start with the number one right here. So what I'll do is drag this into a new composition. And actually all of these effects are super, super easy, but they're a ton of fun when you incorporate them in a creative video. And yeah, they just look super cool, but it's super easy to do. So what we'll do is uh, leave myself uh, to do the talk, make myself feel important. And then I will jump into that suitcase. Luckily nobody saw this because this kind of looks uh, a little bit stupid, but okay. So what we'll do is go to the frame where I actually start like getting down and just before I kind of land. So I think this one is great because I keep going down and you can actually verify. Uh, but here I bend my knees a little bit too much. So we're going to kind of start over here, I think. Let's uh, use this frame to get into the suitcase or this frame is also possible because I actually uh, keep my arms a little bit closer to my body. So once you have that, what you will want to do is actually uh, go to edit and split this layer and then we'll go to the end where we have our freeze frame and again go to edit split the layer. What we'll do here is right click on this layer where we have the clean plate and we're going to head over to time and freeze this frame and then put it below our original frame and just make it longer until we kind of match uh, the starting time of our split layer right here. Next what we want to do is simply click on that layer, go to the pen tool and then zoom in a little bit. And that's where it comes easier uh, to work with Adobe After Effects. The pen tool just works a lot more efficiently in my opinion than the pen tool in Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, it's just not made for this kind of intensive rotoscoping work, uh, which you can do in some occasions. But there are plugins to do that in Adobe Premiere Pro, which I will probably make a video on very soon. They are super awesome. So kind of right now the shift is happening that you can do a lot of visual effects in Adobe Premiere Pro as well. But still, if you want to go a little bit more advanced, After Effects will always have its benefits. So right here, I will just key myself out really quickly. It doesn't have to be perfect at all. And actually, the, the reason why I chose After Effects for this is because I don't like to use this mask tool. So what we'll do is just delete it, but you can do it like this. It doesn't matter. But let me show you something different. We want to right click on our layer here and also freeze this frame. Make sure that you are at the beginning of this layer and not later in time. So where we have this animation starting and then we want to double click on that layer to open it up individually right here. And we're going to click on the Roto Brush tool, which you don't have in Adobe Premiere Pro. This is a super nice feature. If you just drag on top of myself like this, uh, it will already make a selection pretty good. So then we are going to select my jacket here and try to get that in a perfect position. And um, because, yeah, there we go. This looks kind of good, okay. Then I'm going to freeze this frame very simply. And then what I like to do is because it's probably going to recalculate every single frame because this Roto Brush tool is made for animation. So what I like to do is just click on my layer, go for layer, pre-compose this, and I'm going to move all the attributes and also adjust the composition duration, which is actually a new feature, which I'm very fond of. Uh, and I'm going to just rename this 01 Roto and click OK. So now we have this composition. If we go back to our main comp and just no difference. All we want to do is again, right click time and freeze this frame. So then we have nothing to worry about anymore. If we're going to disable this layer, you will see that um, we have our clean plate behind it. So that's the good thing about it. So we're going to head back one frame and we can actually zoom in here. And if you want to move one frame, by the way, it's the page down key or the page up key to return. And what we want to do is kind of look at the reference right here. So we start here, we have, uh, we are going down, we have kind of this spacing here and again, this spacing. So um, just try to keep that in mind. You can really eyeball it. It doesn't really matter that much, but if you move one frame forward, it doesn't do anything. So what we want to do is click over here, press P on the keyboard, click on a stopwatch for the position to create a keyframe and then move a few frames. So like, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six and seven frames because you're actually going to accelerate the longer you take to to fall down so what we'll do is uh, seven frames I'm actually not counting one two three four five six and seven and just try to eyeball it it really doesn't matter you can always adjust it also later but I'm just trying to kind of keep the math behind it to act all smart and stuff so uh, what we'll do is click on this keyframe here and we're going to just move this down so there we go And that looks kind of good. 
So now another thing that you can do is um, actually uh, go for S on the keyboard and that's going to bring up the scale property and go to the beginning again of your video. Click on the stopwatch here and again press U on the keyboard, go to that seventh frame and just make it a little bit smaller and then just reposition yourself and kind of see that you're inside of the, of the suitcase. But I think the animation looks pretty good actually. And it actually looks better than the first time, but there I wasn't acting all smart and I wasn't calculating anything, but it's rather logical, so um, here we go. Then next what we want to do is click on our clean plate and go for edit and duplicate the shot and put it on top. And then over here we want to zoom in and we want to go for our pen tool and just click over here. Maybe make a little bit of a spacing here so he has some place and then just try to kind of roto this suitcase. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Everything is happening so fast that you're never going to notice anything uh, too big of a deal. And then once you get over here, we can also extend this and there we go, close our mask. Press F on the keyboard to mask it just a touch. And also for the roto brush, actually you could have gone and do it a little bit better because you can see it's not perfect, but that's completely up to you, it doesn't really matter that much in my opinion. Because we're going to apply a motion blur to, to make everything look a little bit more realistic. When you see my hand moving in front of the camera, you don't see my hand sharp, you see like a motion blur and that's what we're going to do for myself here to uh, apply that effect. So what we'll do to do that is go to your roto layer that we just animated with the position and we're going to toggle the switches if we don't see it, but you see this uh, little icon here for motion blur, we're going to enable that for this layer but you're not going to see any difference because it's not enabled for the composition. So we're going to enable that for the composition as well. And the reason why they do it like this is because when you're working, you want to disable it so you work faster. And then at the end, before you want to render, you just enable it. And there you go. So it's a big difference in realism right here. And you can see the, the kind of mistakes in your rotoscope. And boom, I'm gone. Cool. Then next, what we can do is uh, head over to shot 02 and we're going to drag this into a new composition. So again, I did the exact same thing here. We have my chair over here and I'm just going to make a duplicate or a split layer, edit, split this layer and click over here to uh, my clean plate, right click and freeze this frame and also make it as long as you want. And then go to the position where I'm in the frame here and I'm acting like I'm going to fall and then like right over here. I'm going to cut my layer and wow, what a face I'm making there. It's okay. And I fall in the chair. <laughs> so basically you're already done. What you can do is just move this all the way in the beginning and <laughs> it already looks okay, but you wanna make it a little bit better, a little bit more realistic, more kind of an animation. So what you do is just duplicate uh, this layer, edit duplicate and then move one frame or two frames and then uh, just trim it and make it shorter. And what we can do is also right click and freeze the frame over here. And we're going to mask out myself just very simply like this. We're going to press F on the keyboard, feather it a ton. And if we solo this layer, we can see what we have here. So it's something really simple. And now what we wanna do is go for effect, blur and sharpen and use a directional blur we're going to increase the length here and there we have it. So if we increase this, we have this kind of motion streak. And basically what you want to do is before you see yourself already put it in the frame, press P on the keyboard um, to create a keyframe and then move one frame forward, maybe move it up one frame forward and maybe over here. And now if we're going to preview, you really see our And that's just a very minor thing. It's so subtle. And that's why I'm making this tutorial. It's all in the little details. It's not about the complexity of the effect, uh, but this really makes it a little bit more emerging uh, in my opinion. So there we have it, I fall in the chair. All right. So that easy to create an effect like that. Next is 03. So what I'll do is drag my 03 in a new composition and my 03 clean plate behind it and right click on my clean plate time and freeze the frame again and extend the entire layer. So the animation is so freaking easy in this case. All you wanna do is click on this layer, go to the pen tool, click over here and mask yourself out. and then go and press F on the keyboard, 
feather it a little bit and just subtract this mask and boom, there we have it. So you don't really realize that we have a cut over there, uh, but that's so easy to do. And I just, yeah, kind of acted like I'm in that suitcase, trying my best. And then I also like brought the camera up and then like down to, to really make the ID that I'm below the uh, actual suitcase. And it's also in these things. So just trying to act uh, upon what you're trying to create. So that's basically it. And then one last thing that I did is I jumped into Adobe Premiere Pro. And the reason why is right now everything has been shot on a tripod. Everything looks very static, very, uh, yeah, it's easy to, to add some visual effects like you saw right now. It's super easy to apply them. And people are going to notice that, especially editors and people in the, in the industry. But to kind of uh, mix it up a little bit and to make it a little bit more realistic, uh, you can add a camera shake on top of the effects, uh, which we actually um, provide on our website. So we have a preset pack for Adobe Premiere Pro where you just drag a preset on top of your video and then it's going to apply some light, medium or hard camera shakes depending on your preferences. In this case, I use some low shakes, very subtle. You barely notice them, but when, when you notice them, it really makes a big difference in my opinion and in a lot of people's opinion actually. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel for more and definitely hit that notification bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. Also check out our website. We have a bunch to offer for any kind of creative digital and it would really help us a ton and support this channel if you would buy something from our website. Apart from that, I hope to see you guys in the next one. And I'll see you later.